uh, next talk is on uh, achieving total control with insulin co-formulation that is insulin rhizodec learning from ARISE study Indian cohort as you all know this a uh, insulin degladec and insulin spot co-formulation rhizodec has in many studies shown that it controls fasting as well as PP control better with lower risk of hypoglycemia and because in single injection you get basal and bolus both uh, injection single injection so it's comfortable for patient also so in just by one injection you can get PP fasting control both so very comfortable for patient also and very study has uh, shown that this uh, insulin degladec as part by uh, this co-formulation have better fasting plasma glucose better HbA1c control with lower hypoglycemia at all time or even night time so it appears to be better insulin to start so but we need a more study so one arise study has been uh, recently concluded which is a rhizodic initiation switch affecting study is a multi-centric multi-country study real world study which assess the efficacy of insulin rhizodic starting or switch from other insulin to assess decreasing HbA1c and achieving HbA1c below 7 percent. The speaker for this talk is Dr. D. Datta who is well known as a, one of the organizers of this SpeedCon and is a very uh, hard working and intelligent endocrinologist and uh, he is a formerly a professor endocrinologist, a member of ethics committee Dr. RML Hospital Delhi. He has a more than 290 publication in international uh, journals and uh, he has a, 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 a maybe a little less and uh, he's a very famous speaker and uh, he has a lot of research interest in vitamin d bone metabolism parathyroid pre-diabetes diabetes prevention autoimmune infe inter, uh, then infection endocrinopathy he's member of rsdi esi isbmr ispe indian endocrine society AS, USA, then he's a European reviewer of major global diabetes and endocrinology journals. He's a member of Executive Committee of Indian Society of Bone and Mineral Research. He's a member of Executive Committee of Endocrine Society of India. He's a very elegant speaker also. I've heard in many uh, forums. And I invite Dr. Datta to deliver a talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the kind words. Uh, before I go on, I would like to acknowledge Dr. Wangnu's support, sir, is a fascinating speaker. We really en enjoyed his talk on how to use this new molecule semaglutide. Today I was having discussion with some of my colleagues. Last time at SpeedCon, sir, had spoken about how to improve our pres prescription practices, correct, cor correct the prescription practices. That was a very well-received talk. I think we would love to hear you again on such a topic in the future. Thank you, sir. So yes, moving on from semaglutide, a new molecule uh, to another co-formulation insulin, which is degludeg and aspart, which is no longer very new. We have been using it for some time now in our clinical practice. Um, before I carry forward, I would like to highlight my conflict of interest. I am on the advis advisory panel of Novo Nordisk India in terms of scientific literature dissemination. So in this uh, uh, presentation, we shall be looking at not only the ARISE data, which is of course a uh, real world study where a lot of many countries were there, but also uh, the Indian data has been looked into in detail. But if you look overall how this uh, co-formulation, it's a pre-mixed insulin, how it is useful in the Indian centric because uh, in India we know that we develop unfortunately type 2 diabetes earlier than the rest of the world. The pre lunch session, we heard beautiful talks by Dr. Yajnik and Dr. Joshi, who highlighted these issues. And we know that in spite of developing diabetes early, we are metabolically challenged. We are a prick phobic society. So uh, the use of insulin is pretty much late in the course of diabetes treatment. It is not uncommon to see patients walking into our OPD with HbA1c of 11, 12, 13, even 14. And once we talk of insulin, like they are in a state of shock, like what are you giving? There's so much of fear that it is addictive, it is habit forming, it's going to be highly painful injection. So we need to get over all those barriers before we start insulin. And that contributes to delayed initiation of insulin. We also know that in type 2 diabetes, there is a legacy effect. So first few years of diabetes, first five years, if I have a very bad control of my diabetes, once my microvascular or macrovascular complication sets in, however motivated I am to control my blood glucose, the benefits in terms of further reduction and progression of disease would be much lower as compared to if I had a very good control in my first five years of type 2 diabetes. Um, so, and to make matter worse, uh, we know that we Indians uh, love our carbs, 
just now in lunch we had uh, the menu was also predominantly high carb menu i would say there was few protein items there <laughs> and the sweet dish was also very delectable so we love our carbs we, we can't deny the fact so and that makes further the control of postprandial blood glucose so much more uh, difficult so if you look at the basket of anti diabetic medications in terms how much blood glucose they enter lower just if you use their full therapeutic dose we know that the glenides are and the agis are very uh, nice friendly but weak agents uh, whatever newer agents we have wangnusser showed that if you use emaglutide at the full dose at very high hb1c we can even have a 2.5 or 2.3 percent reduction in hba1c uh, tirzepatide is another molecule uh, which is not yet launched in india it will soon be launched in us uh, that's also a great molecule to lower hba1c and cause good weight loss but by and large the most potent agent to lower blood glucose is insulin when nothing works insulin works and insulin we know is basal we have bolus or prandial insulin so when we combine them we have premixed insulin so premixed insulin since they do the dual job of not only controlling that particular meal post prandial glucose but also taking care of the rest of the day a basal role also that makes them the most perhaps the most efficient blood glucose lowering agent at till date we discussed how the starch study showed that an average indian takes around 60 to 65% of the meal is made, made of carbohydrates so when we sit down with our patients we should always highlight the fact that please reduce your carb not nobody is asking you to starve but lower the calorie intake increase the protein content that it, that would really make easier to control your blood glucose that will help us as in reducing your pill burden or total medication burden so no wonder uh, the post prandial blood glucose is the most difficult to control um, we know that we write textbooks say that we should have a heavy breakfast a intermediate lunch you, you may even miss your dinner Uh, but it happens the opposite like for a work average working indian many times especially in delhi we have to travel around 1 to 2 hours to a place of work they start early they miss their breakfast instead of having a heavy breakfast you miss a breakfast you have a, some sort of a light or some sort of a mishmash lunch in the office and when the entire family sits together in the night for dinner with with the gossip of what happened throughout the entire day the family ends up having a very sumptuous meal so the dinner ends up being the heaviest meal so no wonder uh, um, and if you uh, sit down with the glucose monitoring charts of a patient the most perhaps the most difficult to control blood glucose values are the pre dinner blood glucose values and the post dinner blood glucose values um, also many times we have a heavy e- snack some families have a habit of having a 5 pm 6 pm heavy snack with tea and they don't feel hungry if you have a good heavy evening snack you don't feel hungry till 10 in the night you have a dinner at 10 30 le- 11 those who are in the business class they just close their establishments by 10 in the night they come home by only 10 30 11 so you have dinner at 11 pm so these are very common urban issues which makes it very difficult to control the late evening and late night blood glucose so here um i think the role of a premixed insulin so premixed insulin traditionally had been i would say the nph with regular insulin 30 70 but the problem was that it was never a homogeneous mixture of insulin the same nph insulin when we give the same dose on different days would work slightly different some days you have a better control of fasting and some days the fasting glucose would go up so we know it's uh, there's a lot of inter individual and intra individual day to day variability which makes dose titration so much more difficult and of course we know nph insulin works for only around 14 to 18 hours so it's never a 24 hour coverage you have to give it twice a day the prick count goes up so uh, if when you're talking of a co formulation insulin like deglutec and aspart you have a very nice short acting monomeric insulin a nice homogeneous liquid of with a long acting deglutec insulin which works beautifully over 24 hours so in a majority of a patient at least what i do in my practice the patient walks into my clinic with a hb1c of 11 12 13 or 14 if with and he is on multiple oids if i just chart a basal insulin it would be difficult in most of my patient to reach the glycemic target of hb1c7 so i augment and most of us are doing in a practice to augment to directly go to a basal plus regimen without increasing the prick count of separate prick of basal and bolus so the co formulation insulin of idig as part does a great great job so usually what we are doing is we are giving before dinner the idig as part co formulation because that takes care of the huge glycemic load of the dinner the post dinner value is well controlled and it works beautifully whole night we have a sustained control of the fasting glucose but in certain individuals who have who have a light dinner yes some people many people have become health conscious they have a very light dinner consciously they tend to make their lunch as their heaviest meal you can happily give idig as part 
covering the lunch that will have a very good control on the post lunch hyperglycemia and it will work still the whole evening it would still work very well the whole night and effectively control the fasting glucose we also do have a set of patients elderly patients uh, who are especially the family members are very co- concerned about nocturnal hypoglycemia what if my father has a hypo late in the night his room is dark he might have a fall he might break his bone so we are very apprehensive of starting insulin in the night doctor please give me insulin in the morning so perfect so for a nph based premixed insulin if you j- if you give that premixed insulin in the morning it is not just going to last enough to control the next morning glucose so here idec as part insulin co formulation if you give morning before breakfast uh, ensuring the breakfast is the largest meal it would still work the whole day it will not only control effectively the post breakfast blood glucose it will still work the whole day evening and till the next day morning you would have a good sustained fasting blood glucose control so that's the beauty of this co formulation you have flexibility of giving it with any particular meal so you you can make it a more patient centric approach in using this insulin and in a majority of the patients with the other meals we give other oral anti diabetic agents uh, it works beautifully it gels very well with the, all the other different oral anti diabetic agents so now b- back to the slides i think uh, we have enough data to show that as our hba1c starts coming down it is a greater contribution of postprandial blood glucose to the rise in hba1c so so it's very easy to bring down the hba1c from 12 to 9 or 12 to 8.5 but it becomes more challenging to bring it down from 8.5 to 7 so here also a co formulation based insulin is much more effective in ensuring that the patient achieves a blood glucose of hb1c less than 7 with minimal effort and minimal permutation and combination of different anti diabetic medications so we all know uh, not only we eat more glucose we handle glucose poorly because we have a thrift to phenotype so it's a double loss for us and i think so in the south asian scenario i think a co formulation based insulin would be again a more effective so that's why the data from arise study was very interesting it showed how it it works so much so much better in the indian population as compared to maybe the other countries who were part of this arise study so i think we have discussed all these issues so i am just skipping this slide So yes so I think we have discussed what is IDEG as part co formulation it's a homogeneous mixture we all know it doesn't precipitate the pH is neutral pH so and we know the injection we use as standard pens we use the ultra fine needles which makes the injection process very a uh, pain free so ma- many of the times i give the first i ensure that the patient take the first shot of insulin in front of me i tell them please get your pen and the needles and you are going to inject the first shot in front of me and that greatly improve the patient acceptability and compliance with insulin use and they have much more confident to check the glucose and adjust their blood glucose values so this is a bit of physiology how this co formulation of two different insulin having different pharmacokinetics they work so well one taking care of the prandial glucose rise and the other taking care of the long acting basal insulin coverage so now look let's look at some data this is the 26 week follow up study comparing idec aspart with insulin glycine uh, nearly 150 or patients in both the arms so if you see it's very logical idec as part would have a much greater loading of hb1c as we see here there is no rocket science here and why there is no rocket science because you can see the curves beautifully the idec as part was given one set day before lunch and you also gave the glargin insulin also but because of that prandial insulin as part there see such a beautiful loading of post lunch blood glucose and that would translate to a better more sustained reduction of hb1c so with such a uh, niche insulins not only you are achieve able to achieve a better glycemic control we are able to do that with minimal hypoglycemia the risk of hypoglycemia is not increased so that actually we are talking of the second part which is the lesser glycemic variability lot of data is coming which show that two people having the same hb1c if one person has a greater glycemic variability the greater fluctuation of blood glucose they would still continue to have a slightly higher risk of microvascular and macrovascular complications so if you can see here it is very clear how how the kaplan meier curves are beaut- separating beautifully over the period of 26 weeks in favor of the idec as part insulin so if you do a cgm device uh, you would have something called the time in range where the cgm uh, gives the range typically 80 to 180 mg per deciliter so you will have more people in time in range 
so especially in the setting of type 1 diabetes i think we who are using cgm we talk of time in range anybody having a time in range more than 80 percent is considered to have a very good glycemic control so it is no surprise that the rssj esi clinical practice recommendation which just came a few years back which highlighted the important role of this co-formulation insulin uh, as a niche insulin for managing both uh, in type 2 diabetes as a part of all the other different medications so now yes that's coming to the last part and perhaps the most important part the real world data from the hari study how, how the results came out from india as compared to malaysia saudi, saudi arabia philippines australia and south africa who were the other partner countries so 1100 odd patients real world scenario here all people with type 2 diabetes more than 18 years of age and let's see what happened here so the mean reduction in HbA1c was again as impressive of around 1.4%. So it's important to realize that clinical trial, the phase three trial data was replicated in the real world scenario. We know clinical trials, we have very controlled settings. A lot of people are looking into diet, lifestyle, motivating the patients. So the results are usually very impressive in clinical trials. But the ARIA study showed that even in the real world scenario, you can replicate it in your busy clinic practice also. And if you look at the profile of patients is like they were average mean age of 58 years and if you look at their bmi they were they had a bmi of 26.5 percent so they were overweight as per the asian indian cutoffs and they had a baseline hb1c of pretty high around 9.8 percent i think majority of our type 2 diabetes patients when they walk into a clinic they have a HB, hb1c between 9 to 10 around so if you see here that uh, this co-formulation not only helped in ensuring a better glycemic control but it was done with causing lesser episodes of hypoglycemia and patients loved it because you don't need to take separate pricks one prick did the job of controlling one pandrel and the entire basal blood glucose and of course no reconstitution no mixing no shaking is there so yes you can augment it in people who are not controlled with a single dose of idig as part you can always add a second dose covering the second largest meal that can be breakfast or dinner or sometimes maybe even a lunch or a dinner some people have brunch basically they, they in this part of the world many people working class they have only two major meals one meal a combination of breakfast and lunch and one dinner so in those scenarios if you're not able to control the blood glucose or reach the hba1c target with a sing single shot of ida gas but you can jolly well give it twice a day now coming to the arise data it showed that the glycemic efficacy was better in the indian cohort around 1.6 percent reduction in hb1c as compared to only 1.4 of the overall st study if you look at the data from all the other countries taking into consideration and this was done very well and if you look at the spectrum of hb1c lowering i think you see here the IDEG as part com combination would do so much more better and this was again done at a low risk of hypoglycemia as we can see very low incidence of hypoglycemia in the Indian arm and as well also in the global arm so very satisfying and reassuring data coming so resource utilization associated with diabetes and its complication I think in Indian setting where there are a lot of challenges busy OPDs I think in this scenarios Telling the patient, we are going to take only one prick. I'm not going to give you a basal bolus insulin treatment to start with. The patient acceptance, compliance, and durability of use over a period of many months to years is so much more better with this co-formulation as compared to giving in just a basal insulin or multiple other premixed insulin, uh, sorry, bolus insulins separately. So the conclusion is that the ARIS data reinforces the data which came from clinical trials that IDEG as part co-formulation is very well suited to take care of the Indian diabetes parameters of a high post prandial blood glucose lies without compromising the control of fasting blood glucose because of the sustained effect of the de degludic part of IDEG as part with low risk of hypoglycemia with needing lesser amount of resource utilization. So how do we adjust the dose? Just uh, uh, 30 seconds on that. I think we typically start the basal insulin with 0.2 units per kg body weight or 10 units based on the body weight of the person. We cover the largest meal. If it is dinner, please give it before dinner. And you check the fasting blood glucose. Give it every two to three days for the fasting glucose to settle down. So if it is still above your target fasting range, you can increase the dose by two units. If it is below your target range, you decrease the dose by two units. So start low, go slow, no rapid changes. Many patients, ek bar hypo was, see the insulin ni kar diya, fir fasting aage teen so. So it doesn't work like that. If there's a hypo, tell the patient, treat the hypo and reduce the dose by two units. Try to find out the cause for hypo. Did the patient miss the meal? Many times missing meals leads to hypos and not, it's not the insulin which is the problem. 
so start low go slow titrate the dose very slowly whether you want to up titrate or down titrate very gradually with the use of the modern pens i think very easy to use and that makes managing type 2 diabetes so much easier with this insulin thank you so much thank you dr deep datta for such a nice and clear presentation please uh, wait and dr magnus you also please come here uh, we can take two question from each speaker uh, how should you open up for question please sir i sir you can ask two question from each speaker if you have any questions yes ha uh, please ab uh, one mic huh? out dr i sir number three dr magnus sir if patient is tolerating 3 mg very easily why we want to give one month duration between switching from 3 to 7 you know the tolerance if the 3 mg patient is able to tolerate quickly the normal dose is 14 mg but we start with 3 mg i have seen my indian patients the tolerance power is very less it takes ideally 4 weeks but in your patient if you think is two weeks you can start when increase to the 7 mg sir i i make in my clinical practice i start directly from 3 mg 7 mg i tell my patient is within you will have problem of a, a less appetite have your stomach and i start directly with 7 mg because really effective dose 3 mg i i you know is less effective than 7 so 3 mg is not effective the yeah. ideal dose effective is 14 mg yes yes sir so i start directly with 7 mg small dose for yeah. the ha huh. easy tolerability yes, of the i know i know for the gastric symptom because sometimes I have seen yeah, no. worse symptoms with the rebel cells because yes, I, I know, know. 80 huh. odd patients are rebel yes, cells. Yes, sir. So, so a huge experience of seeing yeah. the side effects of the rebel yes. cells. Any next? Any question? No. As we go on increasing the dose from 3 to 7 to 14, and we also know that we are doing it as an additive medicine. The medicine already mm. been taken by the patient. They are to continue. So, when to start withdrawing those other medications? when the patient is on 14 mg then the total full therapeutic effect starts coming one month after the 14 mg if you start seeing the lowering of the blood sugar then you have to start the other the dosing of the other oral antidiabetic drug initially it doesn't matter i have not seen any hypoglycemia in first two months with 3 and 7 mg i usually continue with the same oral antidiabetic drug and when the patient is on 14 mg down the line after one month i start seeing the blood sugar falling down then and only we reduce the dose of oral, oral antidiabetic drug and there is one comment for adit datta regarding this uh, asians uh, eating habits and high carb diet basically if we go to the history for the last 12000 years we have been producing all carbohydrate diet rest of europe Thank and other you. other places they were having uh, more of uh, non veg diet because the survival and our uh, kinens and our tongue that is trained for this for us proteins are only in the form of pulses so how you suggest as a now a settled uh, reputed dietitian how we can ask our patients to improve their proteins and uh, say semi keto diet with low carbohydrate diet and low fat and more of pulses which are so costly these days how you suggest <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it's a difficult question we are understanding it uh, we are finding ways i think more and more people are going for uh, what is called the multi grain wheat multi grain atta so they mix a lot of other complex carbohydrates so we had always a high carb diet which is more of a complex carbs but uh, lately we are going for more refined carbs all the packet foods all the pizzas and all those breads and all so i think we are realizing we are shifting more and more back to com- complex carbohydrates yeah. i would say Uh, taking more sprouts so nobody is asking anybody to starve i think uh, don't use not using fruit juices taking whole fruits and that would make a lot of difference and of course uh, many people in this part of the world they are eggitarian so uh, maybe increasing the amount of egg intake is a great source of protein, protein. Mm-hmm. very easy to digest protein also mm-hmm. so it's all highly individualized we need to sit down with the patient and discuss it and find whatever is best for the, that person Uh, thank just you. Just, 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 just please. Just there's no time. Just, minute, just, just a minute. Huh. Just, just huh. is huh. inspired those actors. Huh. Uh, couple days uh, advertising for eggs. Uh, 
We people, you as deputation, should uh, advertise this. Please talk to Dr. Datta in, uh, once he goes on. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wangnu sir and Dr. Datta for such a okay, nice sir. presentation. Already we are late, so with, uh, with this I close the session and hand over mic to organizers. Thank, thank you, you so much, sir.